Welcome back to No Sticks, No Bricks. We've got a special video for you this week. We were invited by Dustin and Leslie from the Wayward Wags to do a collaboration video. We're collaborating with five other YouTubers to bring you some great information this week. We're all gonna be talking about the same subject. The videos are all releasing at the same exact time. And this collaboration video we're talking about We'll be talking about what goes in our tow vehicle, and for us, what goes in our follow vehicle, the Jeep. So make sure when you get done watching our video, you pop over to these other channels. I'm gonna drop them down below here. You got the Wayward Wags, of course. You got our Everyday Getaway. We've got the Roadsmiths. We've got the Brazen Brits. And last but not least, the Happy Place Diaries. We'll go ahead and put links to all those awesome YouTubers in our description, so make sure you check them out. So let's start with the Jeep. Let's start with the trail vehicle. Jen drives a trail vehicle every travel day. She's gonna go through what she packs in the Jeep every time we move our home. All right, so in the back of the Jeep, put the seats down. Not down now, but they're down. And both e-bikes go in here, along with our camping chairs. Uh, the Freedom Panel bag, the propane tank, and the gas fireplace, plus our rugs for outside all go in the Jeep. So when the e-bikes are loaded to prevent any rubbing of the bikes together on the side of the Jeep, we use motorcycle cover, we use our re reusable shopping bags, our chairs, the motorcycle cover, all that to kind of buffer, prevent rubbing of the e-bikes, so damage or damaging on the side of the Jeep. So we travel with three dogs, two littlest ride with me. Inside here we have a, a puppy car seat that we put in, that seat belts in so it's strapped in and then I secure Allie Bell to her harness with it so she doesn't go flying through the windshield in the event that we have to stop. And then I put a pillow behind it and itty bitty lays on the pillow and then I clasp this to her so that she's nice and safe. In the yellow lab, the big baby Axel rides with Jason in the truck. So for the girls, I always have their water bottle and then a collapsible water dish for them so when we travel and stop, they can uh, drink water if need be because sometimes we have long travel days. And so I have a double leash to walk the girls on travel days. It's really just our travel day leash. And I, that just stays on the floor. Then their little car seat thing has a pocket that I just keep extra poop bags in. So our walkie talkies that we use to communicate to each other since we're not riding in the same vehicle together, I clip mine here. So I use Google Maps on my phone um, behind Jason, even though I am following, but there's been times that we've been separated because of traffic or detours or just who knows, I've had to stop before to get gas or use the restroom and we were, I just had to exit off quickly. So I use Google Maps this way, at least I know the route. And then I just, obviously, you know, I plug it in and in the Jeep, you know, I just leave it sitting here and then it pops up on the screen because the vehicle is Apple CarPlay. So my lunch pail, I'll either stick lunch pail. my lunch pail. <laughs> I mean, you know. What are you, you going to the work? Going to work on the railroad? <laughs> well, my lunch bag or whatever I put my lunch in, a lunch bag. Right. Usually sits right here, so I have easy access to it, and then I have my drinks here. Um, I just can't leave the lunch bag open because two certain dogs will try to eat my lunch. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> and then here is a little holder, and this is usually just where I stick my wallet in the event I get pulled over. I don't have to try to reach around to try to find my wallet, or if I just need it to buy a snack on the road. <laughs> Additionally, we I have my dash cam. Heaven forbid something happens, but that's what that's there for. Our safety, protection, in case something happens. And most importantly, I have my uni pass for all those states that I have tolls. Yay for tolls. Cause when we first started full-time RVing, we only had one uni pass and it was in my truck. So basically I could go through the fast lane and then sometimes Jen, well, she had to pull over and pay tolls the old fashioned way. A few times. Yeah, which would cause us to sometimes get separated. Cause you know, sometimes those toll booths, they get packed in with vehicles. Mm -hmm. I got to keep going. I'm towing a 44 foot fifth wheel. It's very nice to have two uni passes, one in each vehicle. That's why it was very important for us to have our radios for yeah. communication because I, you know, he could go ahead and then I would be able to tell him like, oh, I'm, I'm coming up behind you or how far back I am. Right, and we don't use cell phones for that because we've been in a lot of areas where there's no cell coverage. So the radios, they always work. Mm -hmm. And now there's some travel days where we're traveling to places that um, like military bases or some private parks that require us to provide proof of vaccination records and stuff for the dogs. And we have a binder and I just slip it right here on travel days. 
in the event, heaven forbid, that we have to pull over on the side of the road to fix something, whether on the Jeep, the RV, or the truck, I keep my safety vest that I got from Grand Design Free. I keep it here in the door so it's accessible so I can put it on as soon as I get the vehicle. And additionally, we keep extra stuff back here, our tow ropes, and then we have a, a kit um, with jumper cables, and then we, we do have our emergency bag. So we have our warning triangles and stuff, and it's funny because this was required during our uh, sent in the military over in Germany to have in your vehicle, so we've had it since <laughs> then, but it works great in the Jeep. It's perfect for right here. So some of you may be wondering, why do we have two vehicles? Well, number one, it's a bit of a pain to take our F-450 everywhere, Walmart, wherever, grocery shopping, whatever it is, and it doesn't get the best gas mileage. Number two, Jen always wanted a Jeep, so we definitely love having the Jeep. It is a major advantage to having a second vehicle in the Thousand Trail system because most of the parks are first come first serve. So when we pull into the park, Jen usually passes me right as we get into the park. She will check in, go find us a site when I can just stage, not have to worry about towing the big RV around the RV park. It works out pretty good. Yep. Plus, we really do love the Jeep. So usually when we check in, they'll give me, they'll give him a map. And then of course I'll have all the check-in stuff, but this way I can call him on the radio and be like, I'm on, you know. I'm on Largo 13 and he can look at the map and come and find that spot, so. It works pretty well. It works very well. And last but not least, what goes in our Jeep during travel days is our Vi Air air compressor. We definitely love that and need it just in case we need to air tires on the road. Whenever we go off-roading with the Jeep, it's nice to be able to air down if you're climbing over rocks or whatever, so travel day necessity. All right, while Jen closes up the Jeep, let's head up to the truck and uh, show you what we put in our tow vehicle. All right, we're at the truck. Uh, most of the time, I'd say probably 75% of the time that we travel around the US, different RV parks, we can fit the Jeep and the truck and everything in one site. However, here where we're at right now at Thousand Trails Orlando, the closest overflow parking was way up at the pool house. <laughs> so we had to take the e-bikes up to the truck. So now that we're here, let's talk about the truck. So we use a 2017 F450 Platinum to tow our home around this country. It's been a great truck, and uh, let me show you what we put in here for travel day. All right, so let's start in the bed of the truck. A lot of this stuff stays in the truck all the time. We'll start at the front of the bed here. So as you can see, I've got three different totes underneath our cover here, and that basically just has a bunch of extra straps and tools and all kinds of things like that. And then of course we got our trusty turd toter here. And then I got some extra antifreeze down here. I've got a um, pole for washing the RV and the truck, an extension pole. And then um, I've got a bunch of hardware and extra tools in these two red bins here. Got my basketball. I've also got a um, whole bag full of extra tools. I was a mechanic for 30 years. That's hard to let go of stuff like that. <laughs> and then we've got our uh, blocks here, and this is for our solo stove, which is right here. And we usually set the solo stove on top of those blocks so we get better airflow. And then we have the Paragon tonneau cover that we use to secure this whole area when we're obviously not near the truck. So it's lockable and it works pretty good. So let's move to the back seat of the truck. And first off, we've got our kayaks in here. If you haven't seen any of our kayak videos, just check those out, they're pretty fun. But these are inflatable kayaks, so they stay in the truck until we use them. And then we also have our screens for our awnings. We've got three of them, because we got three awnings on the side of our RV. And so these are really nice when you're in spots that you can extend your awnings out and run these uh, sunshades. And then I got an extra old LCI turd hose here, gray water hose, stinky slinky, but this one, brand new. And of course the most important precious cargo that goes in the back seat is our Yellow Lab axle. He loves sitting back here with me on travel days. I even got his little collapsible bowl here for when he gets thirsty. Moving along to the other side of the back seat, I've got, I know you're gonna be shocked, more tools. <laughs> this is my socket set, use that a lot. And then we got a 
tote underneath here with all our cleaning supplies. So all our cleaning rags, car wash stuff, all kinds of cleaning stuff. So that goes in here, it usually just stays in here and then um, I get it when I need it. All right, so welcome to the cockpit of our F-450. This is what travel day looks like for us. Of course, we have our UniPass that we talked about earlier. And then we've got our uh, Furion backup camera system so I can see out the rear of the RV and on both sides. Stay tuned for a future video because we've got in our RV right now, still in the box, a new system that we're gonna be installing to replace this that's gonna hopefully work a lot better. And then of course, one of the most important tools that we have is our Garmin RV890 GPS. And Jennifer talked earlier about using Google Maps, which is great for her because she's not towing anything. But since we are, this GPS allows us to put our height, our weight, whether we're traveling with propane, and it will route us around low bridges, take us on more RV friendly routes. And then right above that, uh, we also have a dash cam in the truck just for safety purposes like Jen talked about. Below their GPS, I've got my two, yes, two tire pressure monitoring systems. And the reason we have two is we have the TST one for the RV and then we've got the one behind it is actually for the truck. For some reason, the 2017 F450s did not come with a tire pressure monitoring system which is crazy. So that one is actually off our previous RV, our Raptor. So I just used it for the truck. And then we have this one for the RV. Eventually I will get some more sensors for our TST, go down to one sensor. And then of course, like Jen said, we use a walkie talkies to communicate to each other. And I put mine right here. What I did, I just took a zip tie and ran it around my sun visor so I could use the clip on um, the zip tie to hang it down. Cause I really didn't have a spot to put it. And when I got my windows rolled down, Jen gets upset because I can't hear her. Yeah. One time, one of our doors popped open on the RV and I'm trying to come on the radio, calling and calling. So I have to like slow down, how to get my phone out and call him on it because, you know, stuff was flying all over the highway. Yeah. So that's why it's right in my face now. <laughs> if it's a travel day, I can guarantee you that I'm going to have a monster right here <laughs> and I'm probably gonna have a monster in my lunch for the second half of the travel day so this is where all the drinks go there's also my camera usually sits right here in case I need to film something um, my 360 camera I'll usually set right here and then I'll have the moon roof open and that's how I get those uh, shots of the RV getting towed by the truck so I'll stick the 360 camera outside of the moon roof or I'll stick it outside the window overall I know we come in strong with a lot of stuff <laughs> oh, but yeah. it works for us we've been on the road uh, full-time for three years now and um, we've never had a problem really getting into RV sites you just got to do your homework before you book it and then make that travel day a little bit easier yep. when you know that you're gonna get to a site that's you can fit in well we hope you guys learned something from this video again don't forget to check out the other five youtubers that are doing the same exact topic tonight whether you're prepping to full time or whether you are already a full timer i guarantee you you're going to learn something we just want to say thanks to dustin and leslie for inviting us to do this collaboration video we sure appreciate it guys yes thank you and until next week safe, safe travels, travels.